there were so many people here. I think that they actually, I, I don't know if this is, I, I think it's 90,000 that were uh, wiped out. 90 million. 90 million, sorry. Well, 90% of about 90 million. Yeah, so that's 90 million people that were wiped out. Yeah, I know, it's, it's really shocking when you think of that number. So the fact that there were any, anybody's here is just amazing that anybody is still alive uh, because they really tried to wipe everybody out. But like what we believe is that the creators on our side were very spiritual and so we walked that way and we know from the prophecies that were laid down when everybody was signing like the two world wampum that this was going to come, everything that's happening with the environment was going to come to pass. So we're, kind, we're hopeful, you know, we're very hopeful that this is not going to be the end of it. Um, one other thing is, it's really hard. I know it is for me and I know it is for the people around me is that we're always defending ourselves, always educating people, always telling people. And it's like, really, everybody lives here and yet people don't know. They're always asking us questions, right? What does that wampum mean? What's that you're wearing? What's this? What's that? And meanwhile, there's all this, these books and, and also, uh, there's even on YouTube, there's a, there's a movie called The Yellow Canary Effect. You guys should all watch it, seriously. You should all watch it. It's called The Yellow <coughs> Canary Effect. That will explain a lot, right in a nutshell. And um, it's very emotional, so you can imagine what it is uh, for us to watch this. Um, so we do, we have to defend ourselves every single day. We were protesting once uh, Barrack Mines and my friend was standing there with her baby and this guy came up to us and he goes, stop taking all our money and gave us the finger. So that's what we're dealing with every single day is, is that we have to defend ourselves and we have to explain everything to people and sometimes we don't even have the answers because we were not even educated ourselves into the history. So just get out there, read the books, watch everything, come to whatever we have going on, and, and see what it's all about, if you're really interested in, in the real Canadian history and what they've done and what they're continuing to do. That's why Harper's trying to pass all these bills so fast, coming in, like, just fast. You know, like, they're actually scared of this uprising of the young people. Like, we're old, I'm almost 56. And there's young people that are gonna be coming up behind us, like Lena and her friends sitting there and everybody, and they'll be the ones behind us um, that will you know, take over and, and hopefully like, bring everything to light. Um, another thing, I know Carrie was talking about the, the residential schools. When we were on the reserve, um, I remember like they, they didn't have hydro, if you can believe that, on Six Nations. They had an outhouse. And uh, I remember as a child, there, my grandparents had 10 children, so you can imagine the grandchildren. And they used to have a loaded shotgun on the front porch since I was like a baby. And my grandfather said, none of you kids ever touched that shotgun. And we didn't. But can you imagine having your family home and your grandparents' farmhouse with a loaded shotgun. It wasn't for any animals. It was for those black cars that would be driving around. That shotgun was there because they were scared of somebody coming and doing something. That's, it's, I, I just remember that gun being there and it shouldn't have been there. They shouldn't have been afraid. This was their land, this was their country. And that's the way to grow up with a, a gun I loaded at 24 hours a day just in case somebody came. So that's, that's reality. And Six Nations, you guys can all come out. It's really close to Toronto. And that's a, that's a Southern Reserve. So Gary's story was, is so horrific. And I have a, another friend from Manitoba. Her story, she doesn't even know who her relatives were. She was taken into the States. And she doesn't even know her family at all. She doesn't know if she has any family. Um, she was adopted and taken down there. The southern people at Six Nations and the other reserves, our stories were very different. Um, at least we had some eyes down here. We had a little bit of more 
Uh, but we're, they're, they were so isolated where Gary's from. It was so easy for them to just do terrible things um, to the people of the North. So I hope you can all educate yourselves and, and come on our side. <laughs> you know? Thank you. Thank you. Um, when she says, uh, like, when they uh, apprehended kids, um, or just children, um, like I said, I've been involved with different organizations looking into the residential school and 60 scoop and land claims and other politics. Um, the stories that we hear are of uh, children being snatched right from the right from the trap lines while their while their parents are out on the trap line doing their doing whatever it is that they're doing either they're hunting or they're rice picking and they're in this two uh, you know four four horsepower boat. And they're out, you know, picking rice or whatever, and they'll see a small plane flying around in the air, landing on their where their cabins or wherever their tents are. The plane goes down, so with their four horsepower, they race across the lakes, trying to get back to the camp. So by the time they get back to the camp, the plane's already taken off with the kids on board. Sometimes four, sometimes five, sometimes six. Um, there was a policy, like I said, uh, there was policies that were set, there was laws that were set to exactly do that. Kind of hard to imagine that the government gave total control to the churches, to church leaders, uh, to principals, gave total control. The parent had no say at all what happened with the kids in the residential school. I myself did not learn about my, mo my mother's death until about six months after she was buried. There was a policy that was set that said not to inform the child of a passing of a mother, of a father, of a grandmother, of a parent, either that, of a sibling, brother, sister. That's to severe that cord. And that's exactly what happened to me. I couldn't go home no more after my mother died. Even though the school had total contact with the community that was, I was from. Poplar Hill and Osnenberg are not very far apart. There was other kids that were going to that school. I was not informed. And that was the policy that was set. That was the law. So, um, when she talks like that, um, like I said, I, I, I went through that. I know exactly what she's talking about. Um, one of the reasons why, I don't know how many people have heard about the civil literature mortis law. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Um, civil literature mortis law. Black people um, have you ever heard of an oral history the oral treaty between blacks and native people? That there had been an oral treaty? That's why you never see native people and Indian people fighting. We're brothers. The civil litter mortis law was created for slavery, for the black man, of a people or a person that are incapable of looking after themselves or others, considered dead in the eyes of the law. And that's how slavery was created. They went under this law, civil litter mortis law. So, when they came across the native, the Indian problem, they had to come up with this law again. So where, how do you think residential schools, reservations, the 60s scoop, and all the other propaganda that you hear is exactly what civil litter mortis law was meant to be? Are people that are incapable of looking after themselves, do we have to put them in reserves? People that are considered dead in the eyes of the law, 
so we have to put them in residential schools. People that are incapable of looking after themselves. So we, so they took the kids and called it the 60s school. There's been a big propaganda machine at work all through this time. When immigrants come to this country from different countries, whether they be yellow, whether they be black, whether they be you know purple and green. <laughs> They're not told at the airport of the Indian problem. They're not told of the conditions. Power lies. Remember that term, power lies. Power lies says it all. The propaganda that's involved here. Like I said, everybody thinks the native people are uh, well taken care of. But I can take you to some pretty, uh, for some pretty serious conditions. Some of the, some of the communities back home, not just my reserve, but I can take you through all the others. Like like uh, Sigrid says, we're in the back country. We're from the you know Sulacote area. We're not down in southern Ontario where the media is, where the Toronto Star is, where the Globe and Mail is, where TV and media is. Six Nations is, in our eyes, from the northern Ontario doing very well. So hopefully that changes. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that, you know, I'm, I thank you for all being here. I thank you for listening. I thank you for listening to my story. I work on uh, missing murdered Native women's issues. I work on land claims. I work on uh, uh, residential school issues, 60 school. And um, one of the things I find myself doing now is trying to uh, bring awareness to uh, not only what happened to myself, but what happened to the Indian on the street that you pass every day, the one that's drinking, the one that you see an alcoholic, the one that's homeless, the one that everybody looks down on. You know, the guy can't be here today to tell you about what he knows about the residential schools, what he knows about the 60 school why he drinks so much. So I, you know, uh, when I, I always try to bring that out when I'm talking, because I have opportunity now to talk for people that can't be here, my brother, family, and others. So hopefully, you know, we, we've made that awareness with you, and hopefully we can uh, sink a seed. And I think, Professor, I think, and I'd like to give a big hand to Jake, for setting all this up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And hopefully, we can do it all again soon. Well, yeah, Gary, I really hope that you can take some questions and carry. And um, do you want to come up here? Sigrid? Yeah. Yes, Sigrid. Um, yeah. The, mo the movie is supposed to be the canary effect, not the yellow canary okay, effect. Canary effect. Canary effect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely look at that. It, yeah, it is an amazing film. Canary, the canary. What, do you know what year it is? Uh, I forget. Uh, it's an area, and who's, who's in it again? Uh, um, we have it on an outline now. 2006. 2006. Thanks. A lot of what was discussed today is really partial of. And it's not really as